Praise be Jesus Christ. We come to Our Lady of Guadalupe on her feast day with troubled and heavy hearts. Our nation is going through a crisis which threatens its very future as free and democratic. The worldwide spread of Marxist materialism, which has already brought destruction and death to the lives of so many, and which has threatened the foundations of our nation for decades, and now seems to seize the governing power over our nation. To attain economic gains, we as a nation have permitted ourselves to become dependent upon the Chinese Communist Party, an ideology totally opposed to the Christian foundations upon which families and our nation remain safe and prosper. I speak of the United States of America, but evidently many other nations are in the throes of a similar, most alarming crisis. Then there is the mysterious Wuhan virus about whose nature and prevention the mass media daily give us conflicting information. What is clear, however, is that it has been used by certain forces inimical to families and to the freedom of nations to advance their evil agenda. These forces tell us that we are now the subjects of the so-called Great Reset, the new normal, which is dictated to us by their manipulation of citizens and nations through ignorance and fear. Now we are supposed to find in a disease and its prevention the way to understand and direct our lives rather than in God. I don't know about you, but I am tired of being lied to. With the ever-growing tyranny that is passing across this great land of ours and throughout the world, the pandemic of fear, people are not interested in objective truth anymore. Rather, they're interested in the opinions of the officials or opinions of television shows or whatever it might be, NBA players, whatever. But as one author says, for everywhere I turn, I meet people who are no longer thinking and acting rationally, who cannot see the contradictions in front of their noses, who have handed to their unelected chief medical officers infallible control over their lives. Many are acting in a fear that has been driven into them through a powerful media machine, either the fear that they are going to die or the fear that they are going to kill someone by simply breathing, end of quote. And then the good French bishop, Marc Elliott, says, fear is not a good counselor. Fear leads to ill-advised attitudes. It sets people against one another. It generates a climate of tension and even violence. And then he says, we may be on the verge of an explosion, end of quote. You know, during a liturgical season, which is supposed to be focused on joyful anticipation, the joyful anticipation of the coming of the Lord, we see the opposite taking place. We see depression, we see despondency, we see an increase of suicides, we see drug abuse, alcohol, internet porn, video games. People are trying to grasp anything that, that will bring them some relief from this fear. But we know that if you look for happiness apart from God, 
it will lead to loneliness. It will lead to fear, to sorrow. And I believe that's why so many people are in sorrow today. So instead of looking at Jesus, who is the saving truth that will bring us the joy and peace we are looking for, we look, we look to politicians, we look to elections, we look to scientists and powerful billionaires who have all the answers to our problems. Some of these billionaire globalists are eugenicists. They're very much into population control. They're very much into abortion on demand. These eugenicists who have been promoting abortion clinics as a necessary essential service, remember, on a daily basis, there are 100,000 abortions daily worldwide during this pandemic. And nobody wants to talk about it, but it's true. It's a fact. It's objective truth. And these people say that our church liturgies are super spreaders. So they want our churches closed. For example, churches in big cities that may seat 1,000 people can, are only allowed to have 25 or 30 people. Because somehow, people gathered for religious services or liturgies are super spreaders. Because you see, religion is not essential to these great minds. They have made our lives as priests, I must say, pretty difficult. You know, when the crisis started back in March, our main work as the Fathers of Mercy are preaching parish missions and retreats. That is where we get our major income, and they cut that off from us. They cut the income off from us, but even more importantly, they cut off our ability to reach out to people, our ability to touch people with Christ's mercy, to give them the sacraments. I've spoken to distraught parents who have had children in the hospital and they were so distraught and in tears because not only could they not go in to see their children because of all the restrictions, but priests were not allowed to go in and to give their children the sacraments, to give their children a blessing. Because you see, these experts would say, such a practice is medieval. It's crazy. And yet we know as believing Christians and believing Catholics that there is nothing more important than our spiritual health. Nothing. One of our priests was in an accident during the summer and he went to the emergency room, and the emergency room would not let me in. Tell, let me tell you, I was one frustrated priest. They would not let me in. I was in the parking lot for five hours before they finally let me in for five minutes to anoint him, and then they told me I had to leave again. There's something wrong with this picture. I would say that the medical world has changed so much in the last 35 years or so, before I joined the Fathers of Mercy when I was studying to be an EMT, I remember our instructors teaching us, the future EMTs, the importance of spirituality and the healing of people. This is in New York. It's the diabolical disorientation that Our Lady spoke about at, at Fatima. You know, she warned us, and many didn't want to listen to her, but she told us how these errors of communism would spread throughout the world and that's what we see today with the socialization of socialism in society communism very outward now they hardly like to they hardly think to hide it now um, and that's what's really happening is this sort of devouring may i call it the demons um, satan himself thinking he's gaining ground we see heads of nations and religious leaders 
pandering to this suicide of Western culture and its Christian soul, while the, while the fundamental rights of citizens and believers are denied in the name of a health emergency that is revealing itself more and more fully as instrumental to the establishment of an inhuman, faceless tyranny. <clears throat> A global plan called the Great Reset is underway. Its architect is a global elite that wants to subdue all of humanity, imposing coercive measures with which to drastically limit individual freedoms and those of entire populations in several nations. This plan has already been approved and financed. In others, it is still in an early stage. Behind the world leaders who are the accomplices and executors of this infernal project, there are unscrupulous characters who finance the World Economic Forum and Event 201 promoting their agenda. The purpose of the Great Reset, the purpose of the Great Reset is the imposition of a health dictatorship aiming at the imposition of liber, um, liberticidal measures hidden behind tempting promises of ensuring a universal income and um, canceling individual debt. The price of these concessions from the International Monetary Fund will be the renunciation of private property and adherence to a program of vaccination against COVID-19 and COVID-21 promoted now by Bill Gates with the collaboration of the main pharmaceutical groups beyond the enormous economic interests that motivate the promoters of the Great Reset. The imposition of the vaccination will be accompanied by the requirement of a health passport and a digital ID with the consent, I'm sorry, with the consequent contact tracing um, of the, with the consequent, consequent contact tracing of the population of the entire world. Those who do not accept these measures will be confined in detention camps or placed under house arrest. And all their assets will be confiscated. Mr. President, I imagine that you are already aware that in some countries, the Great Reset will be activated between the end of this year and the first trimester of 2021. For this purpose, further lockdowns are planned. Beloved, I'm telling you, they have nothing to do with COVID. It's simply world control. Further lockdowns are planned, which will be officially justified by a supposed second and third wave of the pandemic. You are well aware of the means that have been deployed to sow panic and legitimize draconian limitations on individual liberties, artfully provoking a worldwide economic crisis. In the intentions of its architects, this crisis will serve to make the recourse of nations to the Great Reset irreversible. 